This is the ROG Flow X13 laptop, and I thought it was going to be the best on-the-go workstation laptop that I could potentially pick up. But unfortunately, a lot of its portability comes with a lot of sacrifices. Let's talk about this laptop after I tell you about today's video sponsor. Today's UFD Tech video is sponsored by Raycon. I use wireless earbuds all the time, whether it's when I'm working or exercising to stay focused on the task at hand. Whether it's an inspiring podcast or my new favorite band, Good Kid, my audio experiences is a key part to everything that I do. And Raycon's everyday earbuds help me to accomplish that with comfort and without having to constantly recharge, which is something I'm really thankful for. Raycon's come with a bunch of gel tips for your comfort, and unlike some other brands, they don't stick out of your ears. Raycon's have a 32-hour battery life. I can't can't tell you how important that is to me. And they start at half the price of other premium audio brands, but they sound just as good. And Raycons come with a 45 day happiness guarantee. You can click the link in the video description down below or go to buyraycon.com forward slash UFD to get 15% off your Raycon purchase. And when you purchase any of the Raycon everyday earbuds, you're helping to support the UFD tech channel. Big thanks again to Raycon for sponsoring today's video. So the main appeal of the ROG Flow is its specs and its size. It's 30 13.4 inch screen that comes in a package that's only 2.87 pounds and roughly half an inch thick. It's barely thicker than two iPhones stacked on top of each other. And then in that size, here's the spec list. You get a Ryzen 9 5900HS, which is eight cores and 16 threads. My particular model has 16 gigabytes of LPDDR4X memory rated at 4266 megahertz, a one terabyte NVMe SSD, Intel Wi-Fi AX200, a 62 2 watt hour 4 cell battery and a dedicated GPU. This thing comes with an RTX 3050 Ti, which is absolutely astounding. Eight cores, 16 threads, dedicated GPU in 13 inches. This is the easiest thing to throw in your backpack and you're gonna be able to edit or do any sort of production grade stuff on the go. At least that's what the spec list makes you believe. And on top of that, it's also a great at home station because it has this port, which allows you to connect to Asus's XG mobile dock, which has an RTX 3080 in it. It, and you can have it so that you have desktop class power with eight cores, 16 threads, and an RTX 3080 at home or potentially on the go since the XG mobile dock is actually quite small. So in theory, this thing is great at like Starbucks and it's great at home for playing video games. But the unfortunate truth is that in order for Asus to cram everything that's in the spec list into this package, they made a lot of sacrifices that gets me more ambivalent and not necessarily deciding whether or not I want to keep the laptop rather than full send ecstatic about it. So number one, the biggest detractor is the price. This thing cost me $1,500 at Best Buy. It's currently going for $1,750 over on Amazon. You can check both of those at the link in the video description, but that is really expensive. There are other RTX 3050 Ti laptops that you can get out there for roughly a thousand, maybe 1200 bucks, but they don't have everything the ROG Flow has, which is namely that Ryzen 9 processor and the 13 inch form factor. And that 13.4 inch display is also 16 by 10. So it's 1920 by 1200 resolution as opposed to 1920 by 1080, which again is great for productivity. Having that extra vertical height means that you have more space to store things like bins in Premiere Pro. It's actually really good from a production standpoint standpoint, but that price is really hard to swallow. But while we're talking about the display, let's keep on that for a second. It is an IPS screen and it can also be a tablet because it can fold as a two in one, which means it is indeed a touch screen. That IPS screen has 116% of sRGB coverage, 85% of the DCI-P3 color space and 86% of Adobe RGB, which actually is really good for just on the go needs. If you're making YouTube videos like I am, this means that I could go to the hospital and be able to edit while my son's being taken care of. So again, check for the specs. IO on this thing is kind of all right. I get it. It's a 13 inch laptop. On the left hand side, you've got the XG port. You've got the HDMI 2.0B out as well as the headset port. And then on the right hand side, you have a USB type C, a USB type A 3.2 by two, which is good for 10 gigabits per second. And then the power on the back, there's nothing but exhaust ports, which we'll get to in a second. But one thing that I did find out in my testing of the ROG Flow is that XG mobile port. If you just pop off the cover, you can actually 
actually use that USB-C port. Like it'll actually work. It's not just necessarily for the extended GPU that they give you. You can use it for file transfer or if you need an extra USB-C port since the USB-C port on the right hand side is actually used by the charging brick, which is a 100 watt AC adapter. So it's a little slim on ports, but every 13 inch notebook is. This is actually pretty decent, especially if you use that USB-C port on the XG mobile slot. My biggest complaint is gonna come when I get to the benchmarks and how hot and loud this thing gets, but let's cover the rest of the device first. As far as webcam and microphone, here's your look. So webcam and microphone, uh, webcam, pretty bad. Uh, it's really hazy. I kind of look like I'm high, like there's some smudgy filter, really red in the face compared to what the A cam is. Microphone, not too bad, actually. It uh, picks up my voice pretty well, even though I'm sitting like a good three feet away from it. Any interaction with the touchpad, like right here, doesn't really pop up that much. Typing on the keyboard actually also sounds pretty fine. There's good sound rejection there. The audio is pretty good for Zoom calls. The webcam is like serviceable, but like, this looks terrible. I mean, it could just be me, but is it build quality of this thing i have no issues with throwing this chassis into my backpack kind of just flapping it about it has no give whatsoever this is a solidly built laptop i absolutely love it the keyboard and touchpad are good the white backlit chiclet keys type as good as you possibly want here's a sound test for you And the touchpad is a little wider than it is tall, so it's kind of extra widescreen view, but it works as well as any other touchpad. I've seen no issues here. And then battery life. This is actually probably one of the more disappointing sides of this thing. I was only able to manage three hours and 10 minutes on my normal like web browsing battery life test that I do. And that's just really not good, especially for it having a Ryzen processor in here. And I actually redid the test disabling the RTX 3050 Ti and it didn't make a difference whatsoever because that's what the battery life was like running on the iGPU since I wasn't actually using it for gaming. I would expect that if you're trying to use this as a portable workstation, you're going to need to be plugged into the wall because three hours on a Ryzen laptop with 64 odd hours is actually some of the worst that I've gotten recently. And I suspect that's likely because of some of the issues that we're running into when it comes to the actual gaming and productivity benchmarks. And that is this thing is hot as butt and it's super loud and super annoying because of Asus's just, I, I don't know if it's engineering limitations, but bad design on the actual thermals of this laptop. So if you look on the underside of the laptop, you can see that there are only two openings for air to come into the actual laptop. And it's not even very big openings. It's just enough for it to breathe ever so slightly. But as you can see, it's sitting flush on the desk right now. There's nothing that actually lifts it up so those fans can get any sort of breath. And the exhaust on the back of the laptop, as soon as you open up the screen, blocks the exhaust so that it comes up the top or it has to be kind of forced through the back a little bit more, making it so that it can't even exhaust the heat properly, which led to some really rough benchmarking sessions on this laptop. So I tested this thing at 1080p at 1920 by 1080 or 1920 by 1200, depending on what the game allowed me to do. And it was, it was really disappointing. It either basically matched or did slightly worse or slightly better than a recent PC build that I did, the $650 PC, which you can check out the video right there, which had an i3 and a GTX 1063 gigabyte. So this thing is not performing particularly well. And part of that is because in all of the testing, the temperatures are atrocious. The CPU averaged around 89 degrees Celsius and never really went above 3.2 gigahertz. The GPU averaged between 80 and 85 degrees Celsius and was roughly around a thousand megahertz all the time. But the kicker came is if I did an extended benchmarking session, let's say I played a game of Warzone, that clock speed on the GPU dropped steadily, steadily, steadily until I got below 800 megahertz to the point where I was seeing up to 25% performance drops based on the longevity of using this device because the heat continued to sap away the GPU's power. And the cooling is so bad in this thing that when I was doing something like a simple SSD benchmark, which by the way, that one terabyte SSD can get 2,400 megabytes per second read and around 2,000 megabytes per second write. When I was doing that, the fans ramped up because it couldn't handle the heat that was coming out from the SSD. I haven't actually experienced that in another 13 inch laptop. Something like the MacBook Air M1 doesn't do it. The Surface Laptop 4s that I've tested haven't done it. The Lenovo Yoga 13 hasn't done it. I haven't experienced something where the fan had to ramp up crazy in 
order to cool the SSD because the internal structure of the laptop isn't designed for it to actually properly cool what's on the inside. So the gaming benchmarks were like, all right, if you end up getting the XG mobile dock, it'll make it so that you don't have to deal with a lot of the heat coming off the GPU in order to play video games. So that might be a worthwhile upgrade. I decided that I wasn't gonna spend the $1,500 on the mobile dock until I decided that I was actually okay with this laptop. And I'm just, I'm not. The only other performance benchmark that I wanna talk about is in Premiere Pro. I did a test 4K video render and my 10900K main desktop, which has a GTX 1650 Super S, the GPU and 64 gigs of RAM was able to render out this 4K video in eight minutes and 16 seconds. On the other hand, this Ryzen 9 setup with a 3050 Ti was able to do it in five minutes and 40 seconds. So that's actually a pretty big leap over what is my normal desktop day-to-day -day usage. So on a production side, of things, it actually worked pretty well. But there's a couple things to note. That was just a render test. When I've tried to edit videos on this laptop, it again encounters that heat problem where it continues to sap away the performance to the point where it gets stuttery. And then when I tried to render it out after editing, the render time over doubled because the GPU and the CPU actually couldn't run at the full proper speed. So for short bursts, this laptop's great. For long and extended use, whether in gaming or productivity, it actually sucks. And you're losing between 25 and 50% performance depending on how long you actually want to use the laptop for because it can't actually be cooled. But I can see a situation where you use it with the XG mobile dock and instead of having this sit on your desk where the fans can't get any breath, you put it in, let's say a laptop dock stand and there it can actually properly breathe. Maybe the temperatures will be a little bit better, especially since at that point you're only trying to cool the CPU and not the GPU. But as it is, as a standalone laptop, this thing does not perform as its specs would indicate. Battery life is not good. It's long-term gaming and productivity use case is not good. It's well-built. It's got a good microphone setup. It's got good speakers. I really enjoy the expandability that it gives. The screen is of high quality. The 16 by 10 display is great. It has so much good about it that I really wanted to love it. But after using it for at least three weeks at this point, I honestly think I'm gonna sell it because it's just not worth it for me to keep it here. It doesn't actually meet all the needs that I want, especially with the thermal issues. And I'm gonna be looking elsewhere for a different laptop. So that is the ROG Flow. X13, 13 inches. I really wanted to love it. But what I did love was building a PC with my son for the first time. You can go check out that video over there. It's one of the more recent ones here on UFD Tech. And I'll see you in the next video, my friends. Cheers.